Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 19th HTML tutorial. In the last tutorial we talked about creating tables and how we can use them to uh, organize and display data within our web pages in HTML. So in this tutorial I figured we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about how to create tables and ask, discuss a couple more things that we can do within the table. So uh, in the last tutorial we created a table that was three columns uh, tall by three rows deep. So what we have here is the code for the table. This is um, basically where we left off last time. And this is the actual table that we created last time. So uh, we just have some text up here saying table, kind of just like we did in a couple previous tutorials, just to say what it's um, all about. And uh, here's the table. So this is our, these are our three rows right here. And uh, going down or vertical, we have our three columns. So uh, just uh, if you didn't watch the last tutorial or you just uh, need a little refresher, what we have here is um, the code for the table. So to start a table, like you would start forms or you would start a list, uh, you basically begin with outlining it, saying we have our table and then we close off the table here. So anything between these two tags, um, these two table tags, is where we're going to put our uh, rows and uh, columns for our table. So uh, within this tag we have table row, and uh, here are our three rows. So um, this row right here corresponds to the first row, the row one, and uh, the second one corresponds to row two, and the same for the third one. So uh, within each row we have our three columns. So this column right here um, corresponds to uh, this spot right here. So this is row one, so this column is within the first row, and it's the first column we have within that row, so it's uh, row one, column one. So let's say we want to go row uh, one, column two, it's the second column that we have uh, within our TR tag here. And just a quick reminder that uh, table row is TR, and table column is not TC, it's, uh, like you might expect, it's actually TD. Um, and now I'm not sure why that is, but it's just a naming convention I guess you're going to have to uh, get used to, because that's the way that we created tables in HTML. So um, just something that you're going to have to memorize, I guess. So here we have our three columns, and each column has three rows. So this is our table that we've created. So let's um, create another table. Like in our in the previous tutorial, I had a table that listed food items, their price, and uh, how many of them were the quantity that we're going to be getting. So let's go ahead and create that. I will actually add a little paragraph spacing here. And I actually did. I put that in here. So it technically wasn't the same code as the last tutorial, but. Uh, in the last tutorial, I didn't have a space between this and the table, but I just added that in with a paragraph spacing to make it look a little nicer. So uh, let's just uh, save that, come over and take a look, and we'll come over here now and start creating our table. Uh, so we'll say food items. We'll save that, come over here and refresh, and now we have food items. Uh, or we could say food list. It's a little bit better, I think. So we'll create a paragraph space between that to make it look a little bit better when we put our table in. And uh, let's actually begin the table now. So we'll say table, table, and just like in this pre previous table here, uh, we're going to add in some rows and columns here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to indent just to make it look a little nicer, and we'll say tr for our first row. And uh, anything in between these two table row tags is going to be uh, the table column. So we'll just space that down and indent one more time. So uh, if you remember, we save and refresh, you'll notice that we have uh, essentially no table. Uh, because there's no data and there's no border between the table here. So uh, let's just go ahead right now and add a table column. So we'll say TD. Uh, if you remember, it's not TC. Um, and again, I have no idea why. So, though it is interesting to wonder why, but uh, let's go ahead and enter in our uh, placeholder text. So we'll say R1C1 for row 1, column 1. Uh, we'll add another column. And we'll do the same thing, R1C2 and come over here, TD, and we'll say row 1, column 3. So let's just come over here, refresh, and take a look. And you'll notice that now we have our three columns. It looks a little messy because there's uh, no border around the table yet, but we'll add that in soon. Um, but here's our three columns. So let's come over here now and add our border. Um, so just like adding a border to, or adding, changing the color of font or something, we'll add an attribute saying border equals, and then some quotation marks. And I remember in HTML it isn't so important to add the quota quotation marks, but in other languages like JavaScript, uh, Java, uh, PHP, it's kind of important to have them. So we'll just start doing that here. So we'll say one pixel for the border, and we'll save that. And here's our table. It's only one by three. Um, but let's just go ahead and add some more. So basically for the sake of time, we'll copy this. We'll come over here, and we'll paste it. And we'll do the same thing. And one more time. So now that we have a table that is one, two, three, uh, four rows deep by three columns wide. So we'll save that, come over here and take a look, and you'll see our table. So uh, four columns, or four rows rather, down, 
and then three columns wide. So uh, what we're going to do here, like in the previous tutorial, you saw that we had um, some bold text that said uh, food or item uh, price and quantity. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to show you two different ways we can do that. So in the first uh, column in row one, what we're going to say is we're going to say f uh, food item. Or we'll, yeah, we can say food item. That works. Uh, we'll say price. And we'll say quantity. So let's come over here and refresh. And you'll notice we have our food item, price, and quantity. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make them bold because these are kind of like a header for the table. So um, there's two ways we can do that. We can either use our bold tags, which is actually what I did in the first tutorial. Um, but I went over to the W3 Schools table um, attribute page here, uh, or tag page rather. And uh, I checked out some of the more attributes that I didn't know about for tables. And um, so we're going to use something that I learned about here. So instead of using bold, we can actually use a whole different tag um, altogether, which is uh, TH for the first column. And uh, it's set up just like a table uh, column tag, so like a TD tag, other than the fact that it turns the text you're using into a header. So um, it still creates a new column, but we'll just say food. Or we'll just say item. And now uh, we'll save that and we'll refresh, and you'll see, see that we have our item here is bold. So it's basically just a way to create bold without having to use the extra bold tag. So I will put food back in. Okay, so we'll save that, come over here, refresh, and that's that. So we have our food item, and we're just going to change the tag type for these two as well. So what we're going to say is put that as an H, and we'll do the same thing for this. So we have table uh, header, and again, it's just a way to kind of avoid having to type in an extra bold tag, kind of save some time, uh, especially if you have a quite quite a large table or something. So we'll come over and refresh, and now you notice that we have a nice uh, bold header here. So let's start inserting in our uh, information for the table. So we're going to say for the first one, we'll say bread, and we'll say the price of bread, since the price is the second row, second column, which is right in the middle here, or uh, right in the middle here, rather. And um, we're going to say bread cost two bucks. And we'll say that we want uh, one loaf of bread. So we'll save that, come over here and refresh. And here's our uh, first thing here. So we have bread, two dollars and one. Let's do that a couple more times. We'll say for the third column, first row, we'll say milk. Uh, we'll say four dollars for a gallon of milk. And we'll say we want two gallons of milk. And same for here, we'll say juice. We'll say 250 for a bottle of juice and we'll say we want to buy four of them. So let's come over here and refresh. And you'll notice that now we have our table set up here for our food item. So uh, right here we can actually use the center tag if we wanted to to put everything in the center. Um, so just uh, it would move it over. So for juice, for example, let's say center. Save that, come over here and refresh, and juice would be in the center. And you can do this for uh, basically all of these um, just to make it a little bit uh, easier to uh, read, make it a little bit nicer. But for the sake of saving time, um, we're going to kind of omit that step, and I'm going to show you guys how to uh, change a couple attributes within the table here. So uh, let's come up here to the top where we have our border. And um, there's a couple of things you can actually do within the table to make it uh, more customizable, essentially. So similar to how we can add a border, we can also add a background to our table using the BG color tag. Uh, and you can remember this from the uh, background page tutorial. So uh, we can add in something like, let's say, we want to have, make a black table. We can say black, and uh, we can come over here to our table, and we can make the whole table black. Um, we can also use hex codes. So we say so we want to use, I think that color from the table was the tutorial was 99CCFF. We can save that, come over here and refresh. And we have a nice uh, bluish color here for our table. So um, you can change the background color doing that. I believe you can also change the background image. So let's say background equals and we'll just say uh, picture.jpg because I have a picture uh, saved in the same directory which is my desktop. Uh, we can also use this method spe basically specifying the folder it's in. Um, we can refresh and you'll notice this is actually the picture. The table's not big enough but this is the picture that I took of uh, when I was at school. So this is the sky in the picture. So uh, we can do that and there's a couple other things we can do um, which I actually learned uh, just before this tutorial from the W3 Schools website. Um, which is actually changing the cell spacing from on the table, which basically means we're going to change the width between the cells. So we're going to basically space out the cells uh, from the tutorial, uh, from the table rather. I'm trying to refresh and get rid of this here. I didn't save, that's why. So 
Uh, there we go. So uh, for example, another attribute, the cell uh, spacing equals, then your quotation marks. I uh, remember those are kind of important in other languages, so it's just a good practice to get them on, uh, start using them now. So cell spacing, we can say, for example, uh, five pixels. And what that's going to do is it's basically, basically going to space out uh, the space between this cell and this cell. So basically every cell is going to have five pixels of space uh, between it. And this can be useful for a variety of different things. So we'll just refresh. And you'll notice that now we have our cells are spaced a little bit more apart. A more extreme example of that uh, would be if we just saved it and did 10 pixels, uh, we have a little bit more space. And uh, I'm sure you can figure out a bunch of uses for that if you wanted to. So the next um, thing is cell padding. And I also learned this from W3 Schools. It's a great resource if you're ever interested in uh, learning a couple attributes or some extra tags or something like that. And now they also have a bunch of other tutorials too, so feel free to check them out. So cell padding, uh, what that is, is that allows you to uh, basically specify the space between the text in a, in a particular cell in the table in the, the walls of the cell, basically. So what we're going to do here is we'll say cell padding equals 10 pixels. Uh, we can save that and come over here. And you'll notice that here we have our table has uh, 10 pixels of uh, text between it. So there's 10 pixels uh, from the top, left, bottom, and right on each of these, though it does look a little bit more because these aren't centered. Um, and they're also a bit smaller than these. So uh, we can basically do that to make our table bigger. We can also use, uh, this is just going to be useful if you just want to space it out, or maybe you're going to put images within the table or some links or something, and you want the table to be spaced out, you can do it that way. Um, another quick thing that we can do for the table is we can change its width. And we can use uh, percents for some for a bunch of these tags uh, attributes rather. We can actually use percents, and uh, on this link right here, I'll link it up in the uh, description of the video. Um, you are allowed. It tells you what you're allowed to use. So it tells you if you're allowed to use uh, percentages, pixels, stuff like that. Um, a lot of them do allow other uh, values within the attributes. So I'll link that up in the description there. So what we have here is this uh, with our cell padding. So let's come over here and take a look at our width. So let's say we change the width of the table. Uh, basically the table going from left to right horizontally to let's say 200 pixels. We'll save that and we'll refresh. You'll notice that it's a little bit uh, smaller so we'll come over here and we'll change it to uh, 1000 pixels. And now you'll notice that our table um, is a lot larger and this might be good if you're laying out a table so you're using it for a website layout or something like that. Um, but for our purposes it's not so good. Uh, so we'll just delete it what's uh, from the page entirely. And our last uh, attribute is height. And we'll say that we want the table to be uh, 500 pixels high. So we'll save this and refresh. And you'll notice that our table is now a little bit higher. So this is basically just uh, some attributes that you can go about using to make your tables better um, or, or enhance them or just to make them fit the needs of the use that you're going to be using them for. Um, and like I said, we can actually use tables to lay out a website. So for example, now we could have a table with a couple of rows this way, um, and we can have the height fit the whole page, or use a percentage to um, can make the height conform to a page, and uh, we can include certain stuff uh, like this. Though uh, this might not be the recommended way. The recommended way of laying out uh, web pages might be now using CSS and divs, um, but for the time being, you could definitely use this. It would definitely work. Um, but just like I said before, uh, CSS is probably more the more popular way of doing it nowadays. Um, and we can also learn that from W3 schools too, if you want to check them out. So this is basically how you can go about using tables within your, um, and then your web pages and stuff like that. Um, you can include other things within the table. So for example, uh, let's say I wanted to replace the number four in juice with an image. So we can say uh, image src or source rather equals. I'm looking to say picture jpg. Um, so tables can be really useful. Um, and like I said before, especially for like laying out a website, uh, if right now you wanted to try to do that, just, just change the dimensions of the table and the rows and such, maybe take off the border, um, and you could essentially lay the website out uh, using a table. So we'll save that, come over here and take a look. And you'll notice that we do have our image within the table, um, though it did really stretch it, so uh, it's just something that you're going to have to want to pay attention to if you're going to be doing this. Uh, maybe change the dimensions of the picture as well. So we'll say height equals oops, equals 100 pixels, and width equals 100 pixels. So we'll save back over here and take a look. And now you notice that our picture fits within the table. 
um, just has some spacing around it and the picture is definitely distorted. But this is how you can go about uh, using uh, some attributes of tables to change them around, make them look nicer, uh, make them look the way you want them to look rather than just looking like the default table. Um, so uh, if you like this tutorial, please definitely feel free to check out w3schools.org or .com, rather w3schools.com uh, first off, because uh, this website gave me some ideas for attributes that we can use within this tutorial. I actually checked it out uh, after making the last tutorial to see some more attributes that we could use. Um, so feel free to check that out. Um, and also feel free to subscribe if you like these videos and want to see some more. Uh, as always, questions, comments, suggestions are welcome. You can leave them below in the comments section, uh, or you can send them to me on Twitter, either at Technical Cafe or at JamieMCG. Uh, also feel free to use the, um, the comment or contact us form on Technical Cafe. Uh, I think it just says contact, actually, where you can send an email, and uh, that'll go to my Technical Cafe email account, and I'll respond to you with whatever questions you might have. So um, thanks for watching, and have a great day.